All right. So this is what we're doing and we're getting close to Thanksgiving, which will be Thursday and Friday. But right now I'm taking calls, I'm not trying to sell you anything. And we're getting closer to developing this new training based upon the input of you guys and the things that you need. So if you want to set up a phone call, um, go ahead. I'm trying to get as many in as possible before December, the links below. So this was really interesting. Um, I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm going to say I was talking to someone who got self deleted, a remote worker. Once again, a remote worker, wherever he would be, he would be working remote and his company wanted him to come back to the U S or he was going to lose access. And essentially, you know, uh, the guy went to not one, but two attorneys because he didn't, he didn't get fired for performance issues. He did not get fired self terminated for performance issues. He got self terminated because of his location. And this goes back into the video that I was talking about with self term because I was a lot of people's like, well, these people have the right to strike and like y'all don't really believe what's coming because um, he, he was telling me he was just like, he's like, he just like he said in that video, I got self terminated. And what what's going to happen is with the economy, I just think this economy is going to be much, much worse in 2024. I just think that's where we're going. And a lot of people are going to find themselves in the position of being self terminated for, you know, because the whole story was just he, he's a remote worker. So it shouldn't matter where he is in the world as long as he gets his work done, which he didn't get fired for promote for performance issues because he was working. He was doing the things he needed to do. And it, it, it got, it, it, it's just crazy what's happening um, with people in the employment spot and what's happening with jobs. Now, I personally know some people who are looking for jobs and they're applying for jobs and they're applying for jobs and they're applying for jobs. They're not, they're not finding jobs. You know, the unemployment number says unemployment is 3.9% and everyone's screaming and saying that they're hiring. But the reality is the people who are in the job seeking market are finding out that it's really challenging to get a job right now, even though unemployment's low and everyone claims to be hiring. I was out and I just decided, let me go. You know, I was just out and I was like, let me just stop in here and check out the staff of this Burger King. I just wanted to see what was in there. So I pull over in there and I just walk in the waiting room and I just look and then they're like, hello, how, how would maybe hurt help you? And I was like, no, I'm just here to use the restroom. So I, I went back there and I came out and I noticed that the whole staff of this Burger King was Hispanic. There was not one American in there. The whole, there was about a crew of maybe nine, maybe 12, because I could hear people in the back. I couldn't see them, but I could hear them. And they were all Hispanic. And I was sitting here like, that didn't just happen. That just didn't happen. That, that wasn't an accident. So what you're seeing is, and this is just my opinion, because I haven't had a job in a long, long time. So I don't really know the struggles and the, the, the things that people are going through with the jobs. But what I feel is happening is the American worker is being displaced and they're hiring foreign workers based upon what I see with my eyes, not some conspiracy theory, but just what I see with my eyes. And then I was out again and I went into another restaurant just to check out their staff. Once again, non-American. Now you can go to a Waffle House and you're going to see a ton of Americans on Waffle House. Interestingly enough, I don't think the Waffle House company is trying to get rid of American workers, but I think that other companies are. 
and whatever it can take, because here's the thing, and the guy was telling me he went to not one, but two attorneys, and they were like, there was nothing legally you could stand on. And, you know, if you get, and this is the thing, let's, let's talk about this. If you get self-terminated, where you do something and the company says, based upon your actions, we're gonna consider you self-terminated, if a company is in a state work at will where they have the right to let you go whenever they want to, legally, there's nothing you can do. Legally. And you can go out and talk to attorneys and if attorney is like, eh, maybe we'll have a case. And the attorney's gonna say, well, I'm gonna need $10,000. I'm gonna need 15,000. I'm gonna need a $20,000 retainer check, which they, the average person just simply doesn't have. So. With this new economy, self-termination is gonna become a big, big thing. Really, really huge thing. We're gonna see with self-termination, people like literally, and this guy, he was with this company for 18 years. And loyalty, um, loyalty doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I'm not gonna say that these companies are loyal because they're not. They're going to do whatever they need to do so they can make the most money the best way they can. And one of the things that I see, because with this gentleman's situation, is they know that they can hire someone else to replace him instantly. They know that they can find someone else to do his job pretty quickly without a lot of effort, without a lot of rigmarole, without a lot of pushback. They can find this out. And I think from the job side, you know, going with, you know, cause we're, we're having conversations about the gig economy and doing things in the gig economy and beating up your car in the gig economy. I think, cause you know, there are people who are telling me you shouldn't urge people to work seven days a week. You shouldn't, like once again, you know, do what you want, do what you want. But the gig economy, I think, is about to seriously go through a radical transformation. Why? Jobs. And we're going to talk about jobs in a minute, but jobs are getting harder to find. So you're going to have more people going to DoorDash, more people going to Instacart, more people doing Uber Eats, more people doing Uber, more people doing Lyft. So these these platforms are about to get completely saturated, all of them. Anything, you know, Walmart Spark, Amazon Flex, whatever, they're all about to get extremely saturated. And this is going to push the participant pay on the, the, the network down, 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 down. And it's going to get to that point where it's going to get to be somewhat of a challenge to actually make money in this gig economy. Because what we're seeing right now, what we're seeing right now, and once again, I'll, I'll get back to jobs, is what I call it the ramp up. Because what, what happens this time of year, every year, Christmas, fourth quarter earnings, a bunch of layoffs. And, you know, uh, I saw some of you guys left comments about trucking. Yellow Freight went bankrupt. One of the largest freight trucking companies in America. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there will be, I, I do think that a smaller, more streamlined trucking company can do better because they don't have all these expenses as a large trucking fleet, but jobs. And this is something that I have been seeing and been seeing. The automation of jobs. Now, what do I mean by that? You can get an Uber, you can get a job or a gig with Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, Uber Eats, Walmart Spark, and there's probably some I don't even know about without sitting down in front of a person and going through an interview process. 
I call this the automation of jobs. In this right here, for you as a gig worker or an employee, this sounds good. That you can go out, get a way to make money, and not have to deal with people, right? You don't have to interface and don't talk to people. You're gonna see more and more jobs doing this. More and more where you will literally get hired like Amazon, I don't even know, I don't even know how Amazon hires. If anyone works for Amazon, put down there. You're gonna get more and more situations where people are gonna go through a gig economy interviewing process without actually speaking to a manager. They're just gonna be, they're just gonna like, oh, you're hired, you're hired, you're hired, you're hired. And then they're gonna throw them in the workforce and this automation of jobs is just going to be more pronounced. And I think what's gonna happen in a few years is the automation of jobs. Oh, I also went to a McDonald's just to check the staff. Um, saw the same thing, saw the same, same thing. And I don't think that this is just happening. Number one, either the Americans don't wanna do these jobs, which could be part of it, or the people already know who's gonna take that job and they just go in those communities. Because when I had the upscale garage sale, I had one Hispanic come in and he went back to his neighborhood and told all his neighbors that we were selling stuff and next weekend we open up, there was like 15 Hispanic families that I have never seen before that was in there. And I saw the first Hispanic who came in there, he was talking to all of them. So he went back and told all his Hispanic friends, neighbors and stuff, hey, this is a good place to go get a deal. You should go check it out. And I think the same type of behavior is happening in the fast food industry where it's like, oh yeah, you know, you can go there and you get a job. And here's something else too. The Hispanics are not playing. Now what do I mean by this? They will come and live two, three, four, five families in one house, put their money together, work together, and then start to elevate in the American economy. I don't think this is an accident. I don't think this is just something that just happened. I think it's a plan, a Hispanic plan. And because they're working together and they're sharing resources and stuff, and this is going to create some crazy stuff, I think, for the American economy going forward to two to five years in the future. Two to five years in the future. Because this guy who got self-terminated, and I, I heard his story and I was just like, that's crazy, because it, it doesn't make sense. But when you start to think of what is happening with the American economy, what's happening with the American workers. Um, it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And like I, I was gonna do, I didn't get into those videos, I'll probably do them later talking about the uh, issue with remote workers and what's going on with remote workers. But what is happening with the American economy in jobs and once again there's go let's let's go ahead and, and not classify all jobs the same because they're not all the same first level of jobs gig work gig work anyone can do it they will hire anyone if you don't have a criminal record you pass their background checks you're hired simple you don't even have to sit in front of an interview person and then your next stage of jobs which require some more skill sets and you will actually have to interview. These are like gig jobs or jobs anyone can do. Then the next stage of jobs are any jobs anyone can do with a little bit of training. And gig jobs and those jobs are going to create a large sector of jobs. And then when you start getting into professional jobs, being an attorney, a paralegal, being an accountant, that job market I think is going to stay the same unless you go online or work on Upwork or something like that. 
So you're going to have the same situation that's going on. But let's go ahead and go gig jobs, the, the jobs above gig jobs, and regular jobs. America, in my opinion, is manufacturing a lot of trash jobs. And when I say trash, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about jobs where you go to the work and what you do is what you do forever. There is no escalation path, there, there's none of that. And what I'm seeing is in the world, because you're gonna see a lot more people who are gonna become self-employed. A lot more out of necessity, not so because they just want to. Um, you're gonna see a lot more people starting LLCs, a, start a lot more people creating companies, a lot more people doing things out of necessity virtues virtually because you know they're they're like i said I, I haven't had a job in a long long time so i don't know what the job market looks like but when i was in the job market the job market wasn't hostile it wasn't hostile and now job market is getting to be pretty hostile pretty hostile don't care about your food your friends your your family, your baby kids, they don't care. And the hostile job market is just gonna grow, and I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna grow. Automation and technology. It's just gonna continue to grow, get bigger, get bigger and bigger. And I can say this, because I cannot like step by step point it out, but in the next five years, Getting a job in America is going to be very different than getting a job today. It's going to be really, really different. And the same thing that has been true of top tier jobs, the jobs that you can go in and you can work as a project manager and maybe you become a manager. Those jobs, the best jobs are hidden. You're not going to get these jobs by sending the resume. You're going to have to get these jobs by knowing someone or having a connection or your network. That's the only way you're gonna get these kind of jobs. The best jobs, the jobs with good pay, good benefits, good plans, and more importantly, mobility. You know, you can go in as a basic developer and then there's like five different spots you can jump to in that company. Uh, the good jobs. And what you're seeing with a lot of the folks who had these good jobs is they're coming out and starting their own businesses. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting, but yeah, the, the economy, the job economy is hostile and it's going to get more and more hostile each and every day. And, um, I, I don't, I really, really don't know what to say on that because it's been so long since I have been an employee and been part of that system, but it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And one of the things that I'm finding out with the, the phone calls and doing the training is I got to do some completely different training. I got a uh, last call cause I got one more call a day. That's later in the evening, actually. Yeah, that's the last call today. And I, I was talking to one guy and, you know, he, we were having a conversation. I was like, you don't really know what you want to do. And that's an issue because there's so many things you can do. But with the training, we're going to have to spend time vetting out and figuring out what kind of job you can get. And this is something else that I have found out because, uh, you know, YouTube shorts. Everyone's pushing YouTube shorts. Now, I have an opinion on YouTube shorts that I will share with you. I feel that YouTube shorts are for people with very short attention spans. And if you do shorts, you're gonna get a short audience, right? And, you know, and he and I agree because he's in the space and he's like, you know, shorts are just, you know, garbage, just the garbage. But, why are shorts being pushed by all of these YouTube educators 
and they're being pushed and YouTube's pushing shorts because YouTube is in competition with TikTok on shorts. That's why they're pushing them. Now, once again, truth doesn't matter. YouTube does not care if YouTube shorts are good for your channel. YouTube shorts are good for YouTube. But they're not good for your channel unless you do it a certain way. And you know, with this whole notion of people pushing these things, because uh, like, if you don't believe me, just go ahead and look at some YouTube shorts videos, right? And then go check out the comments and you will see person after person. Yeah, I tried shorts that ruined my channel. I tried shorts that ruined my channel. But you're not seeing this put out by the big content creators. And I know why, because they want to stay on YouTube's good side because YouTube is pushing shorts like crack. YouTube is your new drug man. It's pushing shorts like crack. Even though shorts are not good for your YouTube channel. It's just not unless you have a YouTube channel that is based upon shorts. That could be good. Nothing but shorts. And uh, there was there's this girl I've been following for about two years. And I can tell you that she has a successful YouTube channel. She's got 2.1 million subscribers, but she hasn't moved. This is something that I've been seeing with YouTubers for years that YouTubers, they get a lot of subscribers. They start to grow and things. Then you see them moving. She hasn't moved, which means that her money isn't that good. Even though she is a shorts queen. But once again, the truth doesn't matter. The truth doesn't matter. So the economy is about to get crazy. The economy is about to get stupid in many regards. And once again, I know many of you are like, hey, you're sitting here, people should start businesses. The economy is about to get stupid. People are getting laid off. True. And I will go back to my practical, personal reality of starting a successful business when the economy was worse. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, the economy was worse. And I started a successful business. So we you know, because tomorrow, like we got one more call today, and then we got a full bank of calls tomorrow. And then it's Thanksgiving. Um, we're going to see the reality of the economy as we get into 2024. And I don't think it's going to be good. I don't think it's going to even be close to good. Uh, I think it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. But those are my thoughts and those are my opinions. So if you want to be part of the conversation, because uh, I, this is something that I kind of see what's going to happen. I'm probably going to still have the conversations but I'm probably going to launch one version of the things before we finish the conversations because I want to get this thing started by December 1st and get that going. So we, we got that going. And, but if you want to be part of the conversations, just go below, fill it out. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want to have a conversation with you on your ideals of what it means to make money online and how to build these things out. So that's all I got for you today. I will see you guys in the next one.